Hello Internet, I'm Guy. As you can see, I'm working on my steampunk Sterling engine, and in order to steampunk it up some more, I bought a whole bunch of decorative uh, cosplay gears. These are actually aluminum with cheap plating on it, but they're fine, and I managed to bore out, for instance, one of these that will fit right over there, another one that will fit on there, and again, this is purely decorative, it's not functional, um, but it's, it's moving it into that full-blown steampunk look that people like to do with cosplay and other artifacts. So, um, the struggle that I've had with this project is what to do about this part right here. And I've decided that I, I really can't modify it because uh, this is tapered and I can't fit it into a cylinder. I can't take the glass out. So, all I'm going to do is use my Sharpie here to uh, steampunk it. <laughs> I'm just going to make it look a little bit more like it's made of brass. So I'm going to do that off camera and come back and then I'm going to start exploring where else I can put uh, some of these little gears to steampunk it up a bit more. And then the final step will be to take all of this and transfer it over to the wood base I made in the first episode. So I'll be right back and let's have a look at how this comes out. Okay, well that went surprisingly well. As you can see it's got a bit of a texture to it but that just adds to the the weird uh, funky vintage look to it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one off and uh, coat it with the same uh, gold sharpie here. So I found a gear tooth from the steampunk collection that has a number of teeth that matches a three-jaw chuck which is really convenient. So now I'm going to bore this out for the diameter of the glass cylinder and I've got my boring bar in here and I've got to come out quite a ways. As you can see, it's aluminum and they've put some kind of plating on there. I don't think it's anodizing. So let me just stop now and see how close I am to the diameter they want to be. Pretty close. Okay, a little bit more. But let's have a look. Looks pretty good to me. Well, it turns out I was actually spot on because this just fits just so snugly I have to slide it on there. But I'm going to put a little dollop of glue, goop adhesive. Take this off and put a little tiny amount. Just wrap it around here just a little bit. And that should just go right on there. There it is. I keep trying different parts, like these didn't work and these didn't work, but this one sits there just beautifully and the little um, crankshaft pin will go right in there just fine. So I'm going to glue that one right on there. I think it blends in very nicely and looks very steampunky. Get some glue on there. Just a little tiny bit will do. All right. Plop that right on there. And it's centering on the shaft, which is sticking out very slightly. So that's awesome. So I've got that side. I just did this other side over here. So I've got that gear that looks pretty cute on there too. Okay, I've got this little part drilled out. I'm going to put a little glue on that one. Actually, I'm going to put glue on the housing. Oops, too much. All right. Just a little dab right here. And put that on. Looks good. So I've got the original wood base that I made in the first episode and now I've got to transfer all these holes over so I can mount the, the parts over onto the wood. So I'm going to line this up and draw a line right there for all those four holes. And then uh, mount this over here and figure out how to place those parts. Over to the drill press, um, I've got a number six tap drill uh, size here and I'm going to use, as they did, um, some bolts to bolt into the wood. I know that's kind of odd, but you can actually tap into wood. So I've got the uh, 
flame burner holder here and the cylinder mounts here. So I'm going to drill those four holes here and this one here and then tap them and then work over and mount the other parts which where the bolts will come in from the bottom here. So I'm going to use very long um, plant head countersunk bolts coming in from the bottom. You probably noticed that tap drill wander off on this hole, so I'm actually going to go all metalworking style here and do a center drill first. All right, then I can do, put my tap drill in there and just like working with metal, except it's walnut. I'm drilling all the way through, so it's just going to be easier to tap into there. I've got all these holes drilled, and these all need to be tapped out to number 632, so... Easy peasy. So now that should just drop right in there. Yep. Oh, beautiful. Yes. And then the same goes for all of these. So I'll be back when I've got those in. All right, I've got all the parts mounted to the base. Some nice brass screws here, and the other screws come in from the bottom here and here in the tombstones. The fire is lit, and here we go. There it goes. So eventually, I'm going to bring up a couple of poles here, um, brass rods, basically, that will provide power to several LEDs at the top that will light the whole thing. So in the dark, it will self-light. I've decided to make a lighting truss out of brass tubing and rod, which I'm going to connect like this and then solder together. This will sit upright and go across in there. So then I'm going to connect wires from the generator over to these wires using some coily wire. And then above there, these will have, there will be two separate cross pieces here with LEDs hanging from them that I will then orient to point across and light the piece, light the whole engine. And in order to make this look more steampunk, I'm going to actually make little covers for the LED. So I'm going to machine a little hole in here so that this will cover the LED and hide it uh, to a large degree. You'll still see, see the back of it a little bit. But then these will um, get soldered on to these cross beams. So I'm just, I've already made these parts. Obviously I've drilled a hole in there and I can solder that. Now I'm just going to make these parts. So I'm starting by center drilling a piece of brass rod and then I'm going to drill it out to about 0.2 inch diameter which is approximately the diameter of the LED. And drilling out to 0 0.201 with a number drill. I'm drilling extra deep in order to have uh, enough tubing here for several LEDs. And of course I'm backing out the entire tailstock to clear out the chips every now and then. So checking the fit of the LED, that is spot on. So just a drop of glue, maybe a little CA glue, will secure that in there nicely.
I'm using my motorized carriage here, which is really handy because I can set a stop right before the jaw automatically stops right there, and then I can just reverse it back into a spring pass. I think I need to be running a little faster. And automatic stop at this end, right before it hits the center. So I'm going to go in a little bit more because that was not quite fully centered around. Before I do the decoration on this surface, I'm going to use my parting tool to make uh, little marks there so I know where each of these three sections are. Then I can come back in and decorate them and then part them. So here we go. Just a little mark there. And then moving along by 0 0.350 from here. carriage down right there at 350. One more. Okay, now I'm going to make some decorative grooves in each one of these. So to be clear, what I did there was I set my DRO as zero on this end, and then I incremented in uh, known distances. And when I got to the depth here, I zeroed the in and out DRO, the, I forget which axis you call that, and so I knew how to go to zero for all of these different cuts. So parting off the first one, using a toothpick to catch it when it comes loose, and that a little bit slower. The way that it parted, it left a little bit of a uh, ring on the inside, so it actually pressed fit right onto the LED there. So this looks pretty cool. This will be a nice looking little light. I'm going to make several more of these. I have the two lighting trusses installed here, and I've connected them up to a uh, three volt power supply, which is going to mimic the power coming from the little motor generator. And I've hung one LED on the wires here, and then I'm going to solder that on. You can see it makes connection uh, loosely, but it will fully when it's soldered on. So um, I'm going to put a heat sink like this on the wire before I soldered it. This is actually a, a surgical hemostat. And then solder those connections on. So I've got to get this uh, gun warmed up first. And I've got some really thin solder that I use uh, routinely on small projects. So let's see if this is going to heat up. Yes, all right. That looks good. All right. Now move over and get this one. Make sure the heat doesn't get all the way down to the LED because it will destroy it. There we go. Let's see if those will straighten up a little bit. Yeah and so on. So now to connect the bus bar here to the lighting uh, section there to the motor, which is a generator, I've got gold-plated uh, copper wire here, so I'm doing a little coily cue just to be largely decorative to come off of the motor connection here and then over to the actual bus bar wire that goes out to the lighting. So I'm going to do another piece now. So I'm just going to wrap this around something round like that. Do a couple of turns. And then this one 
and go right onto the motor here. Motor slash generator. So I can solder that on. Very carefully. That one's on. Cut off the extra wire there. That looks good. Okay, so I've got all the lights hooked up and I've got them all pointing in interesting places. Now I've got my 3 volt ben bench power supply connected to these wires. If I connect this now, what's interesting is it'll actually run the motor. So the electric motor is kicking this over right now. I can turn it up just a hair so it'll run better. Um, so that's kind of interesting, you know, motor slash generator. When it's turning and being forced to turn, it generates like any DC motor. And when you apply power to a DC motor, of course it runs. But what I really like is um, all these positions of these lights that are shining just at the right little spot there to highlight the little detailed gears, the little moments, you know, all these little locations here that are just interesting and pretty. This one's pointing over there, this one's pointing over here, this one's over here. Yeah, it's not quite enough power to, to kick this over. Um, but hopefully when I fire this up for the first time, which you'll see in a moment, it'll be enough to run all of these LEDs. So here it is running in a darkened environment, and as you can see, it lights itself very nicely. Thanks for watching and staying with me through this series if you've watched them all. It's been a long process and I've enjoyed doing it and I hope you've enjoyed watching it with me. Please remember to like or subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I have plenty more interesting videos coming up. Thanks.